Hello there, welcome to Cartooning with Paul. Today I'm going to show you how to draw Lumiere from Beauty and the Beast. So come on, let's get started. Bonjour cartooners! Like I said, today we're going to be drawing my favorite character from Beauty and the Beast, Lumiere. Let's dive in. All right, so the first thing I do when I'm drawing Lumiere is I try to figure out his pose. You can't do anything if you don't have him posed right, right? So I'm going to throw in a head shape like this. He's kind of like a, like a macaroni noodle, right? And then he's got a circle down here at the bottom here. And then from there, what I do is I figure out the pose like this. This is his line of action here, right? So his body is going to be kind of thrusted forward for balance because we're going to draw him from a, a scene from Be Our Guest where he is using um, a candle snuffer as a top hat when he's singing course by course one by one I'm not gonna sing so don't worry okay so I'm just kind of figuring out the shape right here um, and why am I doing this instead of doing a straight-on um, uh, pose right off of the model sheets well Lumiere has a really cool way with his hands um, he doesn't have hands in this form right uh, they're candlesticks so um, the only way he's able to grasp things is um, by uh, separating the candle from out of the the candle holder, right? And frankly, I, I like exploiting that. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back up here, because now I've got the body kind of figured out here. So I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna work on the head. So if we've got the jawline here, right, and that's the, the candle holder part, we're going to use that as the mouth area. We're going to throw in the cheek line and the eye line right here. And the top of the eyes go right about here. The rest of that is, you know, room for expression. We've, we've got that dripping wax that looks like a tuft of hair, you know, so we got to give that plenty of room. So I've got my vertical axis line right here, which will show me that that is where those big long teardrop shapes go for his eyes. Okay, so we've got that one shape here like that. And then we've got the other one, and I'm gonna bring it up like this. Just like that. Now, why did I do this? Well, that is where the bridge of the nose comes down, right? But it comes up to his eyebrow, like that. His eye socket area, and then the eyelid, like this. Okay. Now, I'm gonna give him, I'm gonna give him that droopy, uh, low hanging uh, eyelid expression here. It gives him more personality. He keeps things really cool, although he burns really hot, right? That is that is precisely what they were going for when coming up with and defining his personality. He is a very cool character, so those eyelids stay down a lot. And now we've got his cheeks in. And now, we're gonna go back into this line and we're going to bring out that prominent nose of his. We got the nostril here, right in at the cheek, and then we will come out like this. Nick Ranieri was the supervising animator and he wanted to keep that very French look in uh, Lumiere's face. Gonna give him a very thick eyelid 
the eyelash line, and we've got the eyes. Okay. We're going to give him an open mouth, because that's what I'm working off of here. And dip that up here, we're going to come down. Like I said, it's an open mouth. And the candle holder meets his cheeks, right? It meets his mouth because it doubles as his lower lip. When Nick Ranieri was coming up with the final design for the character, he was caricaturing the actor who provided the voice. His name is Jerry Orbach, who uh, was... Um, who was a, a film actor, but he was also on TV. He was on Law & Order for many years. He was in Dirty Dancing. Uh, he was in a ton of films. I'm not going to name them all. Uh, but he was also a big Broadway stage, show, uh, stage actor, which was the... Um, which was a fact of many of the of the actors in this film, uh, because they needed to be able to sing real Broadway type songs. I'm gonna throw in the tongue, and then we're gonna give a hint of his teeth. Jerry Auerbach had some prominent teeth. He had a prominent lower lip, and he had absolutely no upper lip to speak of. That's why it tucks in like that, and. Got that nice full lower lip there like that. Okay, so now with the top of his head, we're going to come in a little bit like that. And then we've got, like I said, he's got this dripping, uh, this wax drip here like that, and it doubles as his hair. thicker eyebrow on this side. And then, again, Jerry Orbach, he, uh, his expressive eyebrows would wrinkle his forehead, so they did the same with Lumiere. Now, yeah, let's thicken that up a little bit. Okay, so now let's go into the body shape. Uh, he has this very French cuff around his, around his uh, neck like so, and then his shoulders hide inside this, this ball form like that. And then from there, the torso of his, of his candelabra handle, we're gonna bend like this, because like I said, he's lunging his chest forward to counterbalance, because he's gonna be um, using his hands up here. With these characters, they've got a lot of uh, tears to um, to their form. So he's got this tear here. He's got a ring around that, like this. And then for the balance of and the formation of the base, they will often use squash and stretch, which is an animation technique. Uh, to kind of help the form do pretty much whatever's needed for the action, right? So while he's made of brass, we need to be able to have him moving around without, without looking clunky. So there we go. We stretch it. And he has um, a design that goes all the way around his form. And it's very uniform to a lot of the brass fixtures around the castle. Okay, so now we've got everything down but his arms. So now his arms, just like the squash and stretch in the base of the body, the arms are very, very flexible. 
it's uh, it's rubber hose animation essentially. So we're going to throw in the arms, but there's a lot of give and take with the arms. It, it makes everything so much easier. So what I'm going to do before I throw in the arm, I'm going to draw in the hand. With the hand, I'm going to throw in an oval, and I'm going to throw in kind of like a, a rounded, uh, like a marshmallow shape for the candle. And I'm going to erase. Now that I know where I'm going with the hand, I'm going to erase part of the body so that it's less confusing to look at. And you want to round off the edges. There are no sharp edges on Lumiere at all. So now I'm going to throw in that ring around the, uh, the candle holder. And actually, that initial oval, I'm going to change that. It doesn't look right. So there it is, just like that. The ring around that. And I just said that there are no sharp edges on Lumiere. That's actually incorrect. There are some little design um, elements right here, and it's the only sharp area. <laughs> That's why I forgot about them. Right here at the base of the of the hand. Okay, so we've got the candle stick. The wick would go here. It would go. It is going there. And now, because he is holding a matchstick, and draw that in there, and we're going to now throw in his arm. So like I said, it's rubber hose animation, so there are no elbows to worry about with, with Lumiere. And now I'm going to draw the, the matchstick so that I can curl this around it and bring it into the hand. Okay. And, okay. Very good. All right. The matchstick will come out like this. It's essentially looking like a cane. Cogsworth is a showman putting on a show. He's improvising with what he's got, and what he's got is a matchstick. All right, so I'm gonna match the rings on either side here. And I'm gonna just kind of figure out where it will all go, because now we've got All right, now we've got the other hand, and it will go like this. So again, I'm gonna start with a circular shape, bring out like a, like a marshmallow shape here at the top, and I'm going to throw in that ring like that. And I'm going to angle that candle ever so slightly. There's the wick. And now, the snuffer that will put out the candle flame will go in between the candle holder and the, and the candle itself. It's the only way they could get him to have hands the very few times that he actually needed to be able to grab anything. Okay, now that I get that figured out, I'm gonna finish this. Uh, three pointy things. And there we go. 
Don't worry about sharp elbows. We don't do sharp elbows with Lumia. We round it off. Okay. That's, that snuffer is a little big, but I'm not gonna worry too much about it right now. Okay, so we've got the snuffer like that. It has a handle so that you can grab it. And there we go. There you go, guys. If you like drawing videos like this, I've got a ton right here for you. I want to thank you guys so much for joining me today. And until the next video, we will see you later.